Well, good evening once again. Day 323 of the Biden administration. And if you listen, listen real closely, you can hear the sound of a ticking clock, the time remaining for a committee in Congress to finish investigating, to identify those who broke the law and defied our Constitution and indeed used violence to try to overturn our presidential election. And then there's the question of consequences. It's been pointed out clearly, and just this week, if they don't pay, the rest of us will during the second attempt. For the bigger names called before the committee, the strategy seems to be defy, distract, and delay. Work the refs, beat the clock, and hope to get away with it. Mark Meadows, Trump's fourth and final chief of staff, and remember, a former member of Congress himself, is now suing the committee and Speaker Nancy Pelosi for good measure. Meadows is asking a federal court to block enforcement of the subpoena to testify, as well as the subpoena issued to Verizon for some of his electronic records. Meadows has stopped engaging with the committee. He backed out of a deposition scheduled for this morning. Tonight, committee members dismissed his lawsuit. I think it's a uh, very superficial filing uh, meant to try to obstruct and stall. He's really uh, in a compromised legal position because He's provided information to the committee which he acknowledges is not privileged, and yet he's refused to appear to answer questions about those very documents. In a letter to Meadows' attorney, because that's how they do things on the Hill, the 1-6 committee said they were left with no choice but to advance contempt proceedings. Letter lays out much of what the committee has learned from records that Meadows has already submitted, including a November 6, 2020 text exchange with a member of Congress about appointing alternate electors in certain states as part of their plan that the member admitted would be highly controversial and to which Meadows apparently replied, I love it. There's also a text January 2021 between Meadows and an organizer of the January 6th Stop the Steal rally and messages about the need for Trump to issue a public statement that could have stopped the Capitol attack. By the way, hard to hide how happy Meadows seemed to be on 1-6, judging from the imagery shot backstage at the rally that ended up trashing our Capitol. Tomorrow, the House committee will hear from Ali Alexander, one of the more prominent organizers of Stop the Steal rallies. New York Times reports he plans to testify he had nothing to do with any violence or lawbreaking at the Capitol. Earlier today, the speaker spoke out about the ongoing trauma caused by the insurrection. I'll never forgive President, former President of the United States and his lackeys and his bullies that he sent to the Capitol for the trauma that he that was in, what was exerted on our staff. When I saw what it meant to the staff, the way it traumatized them, it was frightening. You cannot erase that. Also tonight, there's new information about vaccines and this oncoming Omicron variant. Today, Pfizer said the first two doses of the shot might not prevent infection, but a booster dose of Pfizer does indeed appear to provide strong protection against this new variant. Dr. Fauci says this could lead officials to redefine who is considered, something we've talked about here, fully vaccinated. This is something that's on the table that's being discussed. I don't see it happening immediately, but I think as time goes by and we learn more about the importance of this with regard to the new variant, I think you'll be seeing at least a consideration of this. Tonight, the New York Times reporting over 200 million Americans are now fully vaccinated. So that's something. Meanwhile, the Senate has passed a resolution to overturn the president's private sector vaccine mandate on businesses with 100 or more employees. Notably, two Democrats, Joe Manchin of West Virginia and John Tester of Montana, voted with all 50 Republicans. The measure is expected to now fail in the House. The Senate vote comes even as cases, hospitalizations and deaths are up across our country.